All right, good morning. This is the review video for July 10th, 2023. Let's get started. What was going on yesterday? I'm going to zoom out a little bit just for orientation's sake. This is gold. This is my expectation here that we might continue to the upside. Very important trend line down here. It's been tested multiple times on both sides. And look at this now. What did we do yesterday? We were breaking below it and then immediate reversal, very strong, and then follow through to the upside. Okay, so yet again, this trend line has held and we are moving up because I think we can, you know, make that statement now. We might have a butterfly here which will pull the price up to the 1955 level and then it might go down now the review videos are more about looking at 10 minute charts as you know in gold that's turning into a really tricky affair because of the very narrow window of liquidity and if you look at this from yesterday before 8 20 eastern time literally nothing much to do and then two hours later volume is already going down to pre-market levels so seen from that perspective as as a day trade gold is really not an interesting vehicle must say right um all it did was you know going down and then going back up right away and trying to find you know anything here to the to to either side is always a bit of a challenge because here you're still in pre-market you get the first volume increase compared to the previous candle which is right here and then yes it does go down by a few points what is that like maybe 26 points or a little bit more maybe not 26 as I, I apologize you are probably going down, what is that, like eight points in total. Um, so that's not that much. And then we reverse right away. Um, but the first signal that you can take seriously is obviously right here. And then you get follow through, but we don't close above the entry level. So you would try to get out, which is here. And then, yeah, I mean, gold still goes higher after that, but then... It also starts its sideways move, you know, post market, etc. I don't know if all this is that interesting, right? The more interesting thing here is to really look at this butterfly developing. In the ES, there was a chop day yesterday, as I anticipated, because looking at the calendar, there was nothing yesterday and there isn't much today. Let's take a look again. Today we only have a few guys from the Fed talking, that's it. But tomorrow we have inflation numbers coming out. And we also have inflation numbers on Thursday. And then on Friday we have the consumer sentiment. So nobody's positioning themselves as of yesterday and I don't expect them to position themselves that much today. They're all waiting. And then you have to be very aware we are now getting seasonal effects, right? We are almost mid-July. Um, it's, it's summer holiday time. And this does have an effect on the markets because the people who run the machines, so to say, who trigger the algos, who, who, have, who, who want to position themselves, you know, who want to do whatever they need to do in the markets, they might actually take some time off, right? I mean, all, all human beings need some rest at some point. And just because people think that the markets are just ruled and operated by machines, well, somebody has to give input to those machines. There needs to be a decision being made to actually run a program to accumulate or distribute, you know, contracts shares options whatever it is and that volume tends to go down 
over the holiday season during the summer. The high finance guys in New York are going on vacation. They are going to the Hamptons, right? And so decision making about bigger moves or anything else that they might want to trigger from their side, um, that decision making is being reduced to just a few key decisions or maybe more to reactionary decisions. If the market decides to do something that for whatever reason they are not fully involved in, then they might have to make decisions. But volunteering decision, decisions to, you know, to be made just to trigger something that's, that's less likely. You know what I mean? And so they said yesterday, yes, we are waiting for inflation numbers and the same today. But it's also seasonal effects starting to take place. Now you have to assume that over the next several weeks. If you look at date like the intraday chart yesterday, 10 minute chart here, you you probably understand now why I keep saying you have to judge or assess the quality of the open. This is a prime example for it. If you look at the long wicks of these candles here, the first few candles, I have a rule that I also mentioned in my setup video that I posted on Sunday in the trading school, and you should absolutely watch it if you haven't done that yet, where I explain the setup on the 10 minute chart that I use in detail. And I say you have to measure the quality of the open. So if this is the opening candle, that still looks really nice. It's a strong candle. It's nothing wrong. But then candle number two after that, look at the long wicks. The market is undecided. Candle number three, the market remains undecided. Candle number four, yeah, it's okay. Solid candle. But what happens after that? Another candle where the market is quite undecided. So if I look at the first, say, eight candles, look at this guy. Market is undecided. This guy, market undecided. Same here, same here, etc. If I get, let's say, three out of eight candles that have wicks that are at least 70% of their overall size, I don't want to trade the markets. Sometimes it happens that you get an open and you have that effect and still the market goes up. Yeah, that happens. But we want to be cautious. We want to work with probabilities. The probability that the market after a chop like this will find direction is not that likely. So I'm staying on the sidelines. I know that we have a stale day where everybody's waiting and today it's going to be the same. I think we have holiday effects starting to, you know, take place. Why would I want to trade just to lose money? You know what I mean? So, but even if you, you know, even if you want to trade something, right, the setup will keep you out of a lot of trouble. This one here doesn't have follow through to the upside. See the increase in volume, everything else is okay. But, you know, even if you ignore all this, right, um, you still, you know, shouldn't do anything and you can't do anything because it doesn't give you follow through. Right. The downside also doesn't really come into play because they are either missing the volume increase, they don't have follow through, they don't close below, etc. But you do get stuff like this. You get a long candle here after this guy and that's a valid setup because we are closing above the high of the previous candle oh i'm sorry it's not a valid setup i apologize i got it wrong there's the moving averages above us right i was just irritated by this by my green you know like draw by my blue blue drawing here that line sorry that that played a trick on my eyes so no this is not a valid setup neither is this there's no increase in volume you know what i mean here no follow through this guy has a bit of follow through. Yeah, that would be that would be really painful. And you want to get out here, you, you get basically stopped out like two thirds of your maximum stop loss, right? That's why you shouldn't trade it. You should always assess um, the quality of the open first before you make any 
decision as to as, as to whether you want to put a trade on. Mm. So that's the S, untradeable, untradeable. And Q is the same thing, it's untradeable. Look at these wicks, look at the chop, untradeable. We don't need, even need to look at the details, it's just, you know, all the three factors that I just mentioned in the S, they are true here as well. The DAO looks a little bit more orderly in what it does, yeah, but you will get a very late signal and before long this whole thing will turn around again. And you, I don't think you get stopped out here, we can just measure it. So the idea is, okay, the market opens, it doesn't look too bad in the DAO, increase in volume down here, not increase into the open, there's always an increase in volume into the open, we don't look at that. But here you can see the increase later after the open from 940 to 950. So here, up here, there's the follow through. Where's the stop? All the way down here. Okay. All the way down here. So what happens? What, what happens with the follow through? The follow through is good. We can stay in the trade. Price will not push up to half an hour half of the risk later on. So we cannot move our stop up to break even. We can do it. Market starts going down here. It is what it is. And then we close below the 10 simple moving average. What does that mean? I have to bring my stop up. I bring my stop to the low of the candle that close below the 10 simple moving average minus an extra two ticks because that's the sweet spot. Sometimes price action will just reverse without taking out the low. It's just a breather sometimes for the bulls. And then they, they find bias right away and they go up again, but not in this example, right? So here we have to move the stop up, which is a good thing because we are eff effectively reducing our risk, but we are also making it more likely to get stopped out, right? So here we have to move it and then we get stopped out, right? But if you use the situational awareness overall, even if the DAO looks nice as it opens, there's no reason to do anything. Because you can expect the moves in the indexes to be pretty much the same, be pretty much in line. In the Russell, same thing. Same thing. You get a very late signal right here. And by that point, the Russell has gone up by what? And I'm going to count it from the lows here, 1870 to 1905, 35 points in an index that trades around 1900. So that's a move, right? That's, that's a move. Do you still want to get in? Or should you just measure the move that you had so far, right? Because they will suck you in. This is two ticks higher than this candle, this candle side. So you will get filled and then you have a crappy follow through candle. You want to get out of the trade after this. This one doesn't allow it. So we'll probably get out here at a loss. And then you will just see price slowly grinding up again. Right. So again, if you have the situational awareness, you don't enter this. If you measure the move so far, you don't enter this. If you know macro news are coming out tomorrow, you don't uh, the day after the next day, you don't enter it. If you know about holiday effects, you are careful to enter maybe just half position size or not at all. Okay. DAX, what did it do yesterday? And I will, I will come back to that in the morning meeting. Look at the 618 level. This is where it opened yesterday. Came back, tested 618. For all the guys who are too, too much, who have too much FOMO or who, who, who start putting stops in, you get taken out and then the market goes up. That's the market. That's what the market does, right? It takes out the obvious levels. It loves doing it, right? But this was not the place to set a stop, you know, for, for a move back, a draw, like a pullback to 618. You don't just set a stop right at the 618 or after the first contact with it. You shouldn't really do this. Some guys, they set the stop at 786. Okay, that's reasonable because 618 should hold. 
right? But other guys, they will say, I just put it at the low. That makes sense too. You cannot trade that many contracts if you do that. But, you know, there's more probability to not get stopped out. I personally really like the 786, right? But anyways, it, you know, it just depends on the situation really, how it evolves. I'll come back to this later. Um, the DAX hasn't opened yet. It opens in three minutes uh, and then I have a 15 minute delay of because of the data package. I didn't renew it um, because I don't trade the DAX. Um, the DAX is just interesting to look at because the DAX closes for 10 and a half hours every day. And so that's too much risk. And then it gaps up or gaps down. This is an index I cannot trade overnight. I can only trade this during the day. And yeah, yesterday would have been a really nice opportunity to um, to get in to the long side. Pretty much right off the open or a little bit later. You can also see here on the 10 minute chart, this is basically, an, this is like basically an, an immediate reversal candle. They almost have the same body, body size. They immediately reverse. They pretty much almost have the same height. If there was a bit more fill here on the red candle side, a little bit higher, so you get like, like an immediate reversal. Basically, the candles look the same. They just have different colors. They go from, from red to green. Those, those guys on higher time frames are pin bars. So these are always signs that price has gone down too much and they're just pushing it back up right away. Those are interesting candle formations. Don't always work, but they can give you, you know, like nice signals sometimes it's just like the fight down here you see this when they're just going up and up and down they're fighting like crazy you know it's like a, it's like a knife fight here right so eventually the bulls win but you see how they're trying to defend certain levels okay and then let me just bring this back to auto oil oil from yesterday still under somewhat the influence of this cipher that triggered here and i'll talk more about oil in the morning meeting anything to do here as volume starts picking up long wicks here difficult to find a close above a previous candle that only happens here pretty crappy follow through will probably get out market comes back a bit goes up a little bit more and then fades all the way right so yeah, you also have gaps here. You gotta be careful of gaps. That's another thing to pay attention to. Might not mean anything, but still, you should, you should back test them, right? And see what happens when you get gaps. What is that a sign for, right? Could be urgency, could be liquidity. Doesn't look like liquidity to me here, more like urgency, but the urgency doesn't do anything. You know, maybe too urgent. Things go too quickly and the market reverses. <clears throat> and yeah, there isn't really much much more to say here. It's pretty chop, right? Pretty chop. Bitcoin. Always difficult to do anything here because when are regular trading hours in Bitcoin? When is everybody at the table? Suddenly volume goes up. Why? Does it have to do with equities? Does it have to do with any news? What is it? You know, if you just want to trade this mechanically Bitcoin, you probably cannot even use volume. Or you just say, okay, I'm just going to wait until volume picks up above a certain average. And uh, maybe then I can have a better probability of momentum working. I mean, if you look at it, then this here is your entry signal. This is your entry signal, right? But the volume is crap. So if you, if you wait a little bit for volume to go up in a more meaningful way, maybe with this guy, because that seems to be a bit higher than everything else before it, um, then you can probably get in here somewhere and write this up. And then it comes back down. Then you get out somewhere here or earlier, because this is quite a move off the, away from the, from the uh, 10 simple moving average. This is really extended. So you should have a rule to take profits early when that happens before it goes all the way down, right? And yeah, who cares about Ethereum? It's the same thing here. Yeah. All right, guys, it's a pretty quick video today. Um, again, notice seasonal effects, be very aware of macro events. That's all I can say. 
VIX at 15. Yeah, oscillating now around this 15 and a half level. So it's going up a little bit, right? Okay, I see you in the morning meeting in a few minutes. Bye-bye.